What's going on guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be doing some Ryzen CPU cooler testing. So, um, I got about six Ryzen CPU coolers here at various price points that we're gonna throw on the ghetto test bench right behind me here, and uh, we're gonna see how they perform. Now, this isn't a competition. I don't really care which ones come out on top. This is uh, basically for informational purposes to help you guys decide whether it is worth it to switch from the stock CPU cooler or not. So, um, let me show you guys which ones we're gonna be testing today. So first up, we've got the AMD Wraith Spire Cooler. So this is the uh, stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5 1600. This is what most people are gonna be using that are on a budget. It's got a, a 92 millimeter fan on it, and uh, we're gonna see if it's good enough for overclocking. Next up, we've got the Wendell 4 from FSP. So this is a uh, like 35 millimeter cooler. It's got four heat pipes on it, 120 millimeter fan. Uh, nothing too fancy, but it's meant to be a slight upgrade to the stock cooler. Now you guys know I had to throw some Noctua in here, so we've got the NHU-12S. This is a uh, $65 cooler. It's got a 120 millimeter fan on it. Um, off the top of my head, I think five heat pipes on there. Um, definitely a premium product in terms of quality, but how is it cool? Well, we're gonna find out. I've also got this pretty fancy cooler from Be Quiet. This is their uh, Dark Rock Pro 3. It's a dual tower cooler. It's got a 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter fan on board. Runs about 85 bucks, so we are going to uh, test this one as well. Next up, we've got what most people would call the king of air coolers. This is the Noctua NHD15. Now this cooler will run you about 90 bucks, so there's definitely a premium there, but it's a dual tower cooler. It's got two fans on board, and uh, this thing is just massive, man. So if you're gonna run this, make sure you've got a case with plenty of CPU height because you're gonna need it. And lastly, I had to throw in this entry-level 240 millimeter AIO, this one from Cooler Master. This is the Master Liquid 240. So let me just run down the specs of the ghetto test bench real quick, and then I will explain my testing methodology for you guys. So uh, first off, we're running a Ryzen 5 1600. It's, got, it's uh, overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz at 1.362 volts. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM running at uh, 2666 megahertz. Got an MSI B350 PC Mate motherboard, um, an RX 580 graphics card attached here. Um, any other relevant information? We've got a Toshiba OCZ uh, TR150 SSD, an FSP Hydro G 650 watt power supply, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, as far as testing methodology goes, I've disabled any power saving features in the BIOS. Um, Windows is set to high performance mode, and we are gonna be running Prime 95, the uh, small FFT's torture test for 30 minutes. Um, also, I should mention here, I do let the system warm up for 30 minutes before capturing any idle temperatures. And uh, is anything else relevant? Disclaimer, I am in a uh, office, not really a lab, so these results are uh, approximate, but they're not exact, so just keep that in mind. However, this should give you a pretty good idea of how all of these CPU coolers perform. Um, also, I should mention my ambient temp here during all of these testing is uh, 28 degrees Celsius, which I know is warm. It's hot as shit here. It's in the summertime, so uh, yeah. So with all that said, let's get to the results. As you guys can see, these are the results. I also decided to notate the fan RPM here just to give you guys an idea of what it takes to achieve these temperatures. Now I know they're not all running the same fan size, but this will be just a uh, kind of a general guideline to see if maybe any of these coolers are uh, brute forcing their way to the results. Now with that said, I also dropped the fan speed to around 1000 RPM for all of the coolers. Uh, unfortunately, due to the temps, the Wraith Spire was not able to participate in this testing, but you can see the results for the rest of the coolers here. None of them switched places performance-wise, but you can see the gap did close between the NHD15 and the Master Liquid 240. And that's pretty much it for the testing. I think we can all come to the conclusion here that even a $35 cooler like the Window 4 is a nice improvement over the Wraith Spire. If you're planning on overclocking, you'll definitely want to invest in an aftermarket cooler, even if it's one that only costs 35 bucks. Now, obviously you may have a little bit more leeway with the Spire if you live in cooler temps, or maybe if you have a chip that's able to reach 3.8 gigahertz on a lower voltage, but really, I think it's worth it to just go ahead and upgrade the cooler. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. I uh, like this video if you guys like this type of content. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm out of here. Until next time, see ya.